So chapter 43 is all about the nervous system and we'll be looking at not just the neurons but how the nervous system is organized. So the evolution, structure, and function of the nervous system. So the four sections that we're going to look at here are the evolution and development of the nervous systems, the structure and function of the nervous systems of humans and other vertebrates, the cellular basis of learning and memory, and the impact on public health. So the nervous systems are a product of years and years of evolution and there's this development of the nervous system gave advantages and promoted reproductive success in animals. And so um, the organization ranges from simple network to a few cell of a few cells to a complexity of a human brain. So the, this is the, the first section we're going to be looking at here then is just what are the representative nervous systems of the different types. So all animals have a nervous system except for the sponges. The sponges do not have a tissue level of organization. Uh, they're simply cellular level of organization, but they're still considered an animal. Um, they're kind of one of those, uh, is it really an animal or is it a protozoan? You know, it's really hard to... Um, it's not really a proto, I mean, the protist kingdom doesn't exist anymore. So anyway, but this is an animal that does not have a nervous system, but everything else does have a nervous system. So the nerve net is the first type, and it is the simplest of the nervous systems, and it includes the jellyfish and hydras and sea anemones, which is part of this group that's called uh, the Nidarians. And so Nidaria, um, they are just like have a, a system that is neurons that are connected to a network of, of neurons. And when one neuron is activated, then it, con it, it activates all or most of the neurons. So one area getting innervated, getting, you know, responding to some sort of stimulus causes all of them to be excited and stimulated all at once. And so it usually can, it causes contractile cells to be uh, stimulated. The echinoderms have a nerve ring. They're a little bit more complex. They have a radial symmetry as well, like the um, Nidarians, and they have a radial network uh, extending to each arm. So there's a ring, and then usually they're, um, they have a symmetry with five sections. Um, so five equal similar sections and each of these sections is uh, extending a nerve extends to the arms and then the mouth and the arms are able to work independently so that's a little different than the nadarians who when you excite one it excites all of the nerves in the network then we tend to head towards cephalization and cephalization cephala refers to the brain and so this is the first time we're going to see a brain. And so you get an increasingly complex brain as you go. So the first group is the platyhelminthes or the flatworms. And so one of the most common ones of these is the planaria. You may have seen the planaria. It has, um, when you divide it, it can go in and, and uh, if you split it down the middle, uh, it can grow back half. And so then you end up having possibly two heads there. Um, so it's the first phylum that has a brain with defined regions and synaptic connections. And so there's a, a nerve cord, two nerve cords, and then transverse nerve cords. So two nerve cords and then transverse nerve cords running through it. And so this is kind of um, the body type that we see with planaria. And they have the brain extension up here running down. That's not a very pretty picture. Don't laugh at my diagrams. Um, but that is just a basic, simple identification of those. So two nerve cords that run down the length of the flatworm, and then these transverse cords that connect those two nerve cords and run across the horizontally across the, the worm. So we'll erase that not so flattering picture. Alrighty. 
And then the annelids. So the annelids have uh, ganglia. And uh, so that is a collection of cell bodies. So we haven't defined that term yet. Um, so it's a collection of cell bodies with limited ability, limited synapses, um, and few or no subdivisions. Um, so the definition of a ganglia is actually just a collection of neuron cell bodies. And usually we refer to this as something um, that's in the peripheral nervous system in humans. Um, but in the annelids, they have limited processing ability and limited synapses. That's unlike the vertebrate uh, brains and nervous system. And they have few or no subdivisions like those found in the brain and um, nerves in each seg segment. And so they can coordinate sensory and motor abilities. So that is kind of the new thing that they can do here. And then the simple mollusks. Um, so annelids, by the way, um, this is more of the segmented um, round worms. So there's roundworms, that's nematodes, nematodes or nematodes, and then the annelids are segmented round. So the nematodes are not segmented, and these are much more advanced. They consider, well, however they consider it anymore. Everything's kind of been changed with a lot of the new findings with genetics and everything like that. But in general, we consider annelids a more developed um, animal. Um, however, with an, in terms of their brain, they're more on the lines of the simple mollusks. So simple mollusks um, simple mollusks are going to be things like a, a snail or a clam or a slug. Um, so these are more simple ones, um, not including octopus and uh, squid, because squid are uh, considered more advanced, and you'll see why in just a minute. So they have a pair of anterior ganglia and nerve cords, and they're similar. So you have a collection. You have ganglia in annelids and nerves in each segment, because again, this is a segmented worm. Um, and they can coordinate local sensory and motor. And really, the simple mollusk is very similar, but they have a pair of anterior ganglia and they have paired nerve cords. So in insects, they have a brain that has developments like subdivisions. So that's kind of a new thing for them. And Drosophila is, by the way, just an, is a fruit fly. And so with, the, so with the advanced mollusks, they have um, a well-developed brain. So advanced mollusks, they have a well-developed brain and subdivisions. So both the insects and the advanced mollusks will have these subdivisions, but the advanced mollusks have a more well-developed brain and it's um, larger as well. Of course, the mollusks are bigger than these insects, but um, these include the octopus. So that would be when you're talking about this. And I, I don't know if you've heard of these stories, but um, octopus can actually, octopi, okay, the plural, an octopus can actually open lids. They've, they've learned how to open their cages. They've learned how to open lids. Um, they are well more advanced than we would give them credit for, I think. And then chordates, these are the ones that are a, a group that includes the vertebrates. And so, um, so vertebrates that have a backbone, that have um, an exo or endoskeleton and have a backbone. A spinal cord and um, so this is one of the developments that you don't see is um, others have a brain but they don't all have a spinal cord so the chordates have a spinal cord and um, vertebrates that's what they're kind of known for is having vertebrae that protect the spinal cord 
And so they also have a developed central nervous system and peripheral nervous system. So while others have a brain, this has a brain and spinal cord, and while others have nerves, these are more um, connected to this and, and, relay, and they relay to the central nervous system. So this is the most advanced of the brains. So you can see this uh, comparison of the different types of, of brains um, from the nerve net that you see here in the um, Nadarian, so that's like a sea anemone. You can see the nerve ring and the radial nerves in the starfish, the sea star. And then you can see the planaria, which I just love planaria, they're so cute. They have like just the, the sweetest little arrangement of um, nerves come running down through there. They have their little brain that has subdivisions and uh, little eyes. And then you can see the annelids, which have um, all these segments. And so they have a brain and all these little vertebral ganglia. And then you have ventral nerves with ganglia in the arthropods and then the mollusks have the brain with subdivisions and ganglia and then the chordates have a central nervous system and peripheral nervous system.